welcome back to Corrections Mama 27. So the story today I'm going to tell you about is one that is hard to forget. I'm not going to read any paperwork on this today because, well, I don't know where that paperwork is. I'm sure I'll come across it eventually, and if I do, then I can read it to you. So anyway, I'm going to shoot from the hip on this one, and we're going to call this the Hot Burrito. So this is um, happened at Perryville at Lumley Unit. Lumley Unit is a closed custody yard. Um, this particular yard was not the death row yard. It was, you know, just the general population. And so this is what happened. I was um, the yard officer, um, which means I'm the one that does the security checks. I supervise chow. I do help do the turnouts. I do pat downs. I do escorts to medical and handle anything like that going on. So it was uh, chow time, so I turned everybody out for chow. And I was in the chow hall, and um, there's this particular Hispanic girl. She... <laughs> She had her little group, groupie, her little group of friends, and um, uh, she she was always stealing food out of chow hall, and I was on to her about it, and um, so, you know, they're not really supposed to take anything out of chow hall. You can bring your cup and your spork, and you can take that out empty. I don't really don't care if it has uh, Kool-Aid in it or whatever. I don't trip on that. But if you're like uh, sneaking um, food from the kitchen and oranges and things like that, or whatever, if you're sneaking food out of the kitchen that they pass to you under the uh, little tray trap, you know, it's like a trap, it's like this big. And it's that way on purpose because they don't want you, they don't want the inmates to be communicating and talking to the workers and the people behind there. So they just stand in line and they push the tray out and they take the tray and then my job is to sit with a clipboard and a pen or pen and mark off every inmate shows their ID and you mark off their bed number tell them say where's your bed number and they show their ID tell you where their bed number is and then you just uh, verify that that's them and mark them off so um, she had a girlfriend in there that was always passing her uh, food and she was stealing food and um, you know it was becoming a problem because you can't let one do it and everybody does it and then the kitchen is short on food and they're short on money and then like canteen uh, the white shirts they keep their own um, you know they keep track of the budget and how much food is being eaten and spent and all this stuff right so you know this thing can get out of control as you can imagine, in a prison where food is limited, where store is limited, you know, it could always become a problem. So, um, so I was um, just doing my job and whatnot, and then she was um, finished her tray, went up, put her tray uh, in the trap, which is for the uh, a second trap, which is for the dishwasher, and. I could see that somebody had passed her something. So I was like kind of on the lookout for that because she was known to be stealing food. <laughs> so um, then another inmate was trying to distract me or whatever. And then, um, and this is typical games that they play. One inmate will distract you and turn you away and ask you a question. And so my back is turned to her and she's over here shoving you know, a burrito in her pants. Now, I knew this was probably going on, and sometimes it's better to kind of play stupid. So, it, you know, cuts down on the conflict. And so, um, this inmate is, I knew she was shoving food down there. Um, gross. It's just disgusting, but that's what they do. So um, I kind of stop her at the door after I answer this inmate's question. She signals and, that, and leaves because she sees that she's already finished packing burritos in her pants. So 
I stopped this girl at the door. Uh, let's just call her Garcia. And that's not her name. I don't remember her name. But anyway, Garcia's common name. So she, uh, I stopped her at the door and I start talking to her. And, um, you know, I was just trying to see what was going on and questioning her about different things and asking her, you know, you know, were you at rec today? And, um, how are things, you know, going with you, whatever. I was just asking her random questions. And then she's like, uh, uh, uh. Uh, I got, I gotta go. I gotta go. Corrections, Mama. I gotta go. I said, go where? To do what? She goes. I said, you know, you got a minute. You can talk to me. She goes, well, I gotta go pee. And she's acting like she's crossing her legs and telling me she's gotta go. And I'm holding her up and holding her up. And I'm like, you know, you can hang on just a minute. You know, um, what, you know, what was that about? And what were you talking to this? Whatever. You know, I don't remember what questions I was asking her. I was just asking her random questions and holding her up. And um, then I was talking to her about, you know, did you take some food? And she's like, no, I don't, I didn't take any food, but I got to go pee. I'm going to pee my pants. I got to go. And I'm like, you know, you know, I think you might have taken, taken some food. You should let me pat you down. And she didn't want to let me pat her down. Normally, like, you know, you would push on that, but I really didn't. I was just kind of holding her up and holding her up. And um, she kept fussing and crying and crossing the legs and oh, oh I gotta go I gotta go and and uh you know these these female inmates are generally uh just in general they're very dramatic and um you know so they put on a good act all the time you just never know what they're really doing I knew she was stealing some food and I was trying to be you know uh nice about it in a way and then um so she, we, I just kept talking to her and holding her up for a little while. And then uh, other inmates were putting their tray in and leaving. And I'm at the door. I'm kind of watching the jail hall and talking to her at the same time. And then finally I let her go. And um, after everybody finished chow and finished up, I went to do a walk. And I'm locking everybody down. And they're going in their houses and putting their IDs in their window. And then I'm shutting the door, making sure it's secure. So they don't, you know, try to creep out and do whatever mischief that they're up to all the time. Uh, the women are difficult to supervise because they're extremely manipulative and they're very, very dramatic. And they also have a lot of, like, drama because they adopt each other as families. So um, if you're in prison, there's probably one lady that you relate to and you call her mama mom and the other one you call you know might be a dyke and you call them dad and then you know the other one you're gonna call uh uh that's my cousin or that's my sister if you're closer or that's my uh niece or nephew none of them say oh that's my friend no they're like no that's my cousin or that's my niece and that's my sister. She's my sister. Leave my sister alone. What are you talking to her for? On and on, you know. And um, and they, they create these family cliques. Um, it's just the nature of the women because um, to most women, family is everything. To most women, they're, they don't have their family in prison. They don't have their kids. They don't have their mom, their dad, their cousins, their nephews, their nieces. Those family connections are more, super more important, I think, to women than it is to men. Not that it's not important to men. It is. Um, but uh, that's women's life. I mean, that's everything to them. So uh, they create their own families as a coping mechanism. And this goes on in all the women's prison. It went on in Arizona. It went on in Texas when I was there. And I'm pretty sure it goes on at any other women's prison. So, um, anyway, I'm checking the cells and getting everybody, you know, shutting the doors and making sure everyone is in and their IDs are out and ready for count and whatnot. And, um, the, the girl that I knew had stole some food, she was sitting there with her girlfriends or whatever. I don't know who she was saying they were related to. But she had like, there was like uh, four girls in there and she had a paper plate 
or I don't know what it wasn't a paper plate. It, she had it on a piece of paper or something. And they there's it's so nasty. They take their dirty ID and they cut it up. They cut the food up and divvy it out and split it up. And she was cutting up and she's like, oh, oh, she's going to lock us down. But when we're done with count, she's going to open the doors and then uh, at rec time, it'll be uh, ready for y'all. And then a couple of them took, they wanted to take some of the food with her. And I'm like, do you know what that was? I says, uh, do you guys know how she got the burrito and where she put it? She goes, well, yeah, of course. I says, listen, she had that. I says, you had that in your panties, didn't you? She's like, yeah, yeah, I did. And I said, that is disgusting. So you guys are basically eating food she had in her underwear up against her vag, and you guys are perfectly okay with eating that? Like, really? That is like some kind of disgusting, okay? Like... I can't even begin to tell you makes me feel different ways about it like it's disgusting and she's like well yeah well you know that's how we have to do it you know she, you know that's how she did it. you're not gonna take it away are you I says you know what no I'm not gonna take it away you guys go ahead and eat that nasty shit like I'm gonna, I think that's punishment enough is that you're gonna eat it after knowing it's been in her underwear. So y'all go right ahead. So she, uh, a couple of the girls, one or two of them took some of the food and the rest she was going to heat, finish, you know, or heat it up or do something else to it. Sometimes they do other stuff. They add other ingredients like Fritos or whatever. Um, um, they all want different things, whatever. So. Um, I told them to go back to their house and lock down or everything and they did and they really aren't supposed to be in other inmate cells and I told them that too look you know you know you're not supposed to be in there I know what you guys were up to and what you were doing it's whatever I'm just telling you don't make a habit of it or you're gonna get a ticket blah 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 right because inmates will go into each other's cell and smash each other so you cannot allow that to continue to go on you know you have to address it and it's really your discretion. So at that time, I decided to just informally address it, but to definitely address it. And then um, everyone locked down. And then um, when I'm doing count, she's like at the window, like looking through the glass window. And she's saying, uh, corrections, mama, uh, I didn't talk to you. I said, what, about what? I'm doing count. Well, I really need to talk to you, it's important. And I says, well, let me finish count and I'll swing back by, you know, because you only have a certain amount of time to get count clear. Count is a priority. It's the main reason why we're there. It's the most important thing you do is count to make sure those inmates are still present, to make sure they're not running out in the street, you know, putting other people in danger. So I let me finish count and call it in. I'll come back. And I came back and she goes, oh, my God. It took you so long. I says, well, it's whatever. I have to do count. Like, you're fine, right? She goes, no, not really. And I says, well, what's wrong? She said, well, um, you know, um, when you were talking to me, um, you know, you were right. Okay, I fucked up. And, you know, um, I took that burrito and I put it in my pants, in my underwear. I says, yes, gross. And she goes, well, I have a little problem. And I'm just like, what is the problem? She said, well, it was really, really hot. That burrito was hot. And you know, when I was telling you how to go to the bathroom and I'm crossing my legs and I'm like squirming around, she said, it was because it was burning me there. Like it totally burned my vag. Like it's bad. Like I need to see a doctor. It's that bad. And I said, you burned it like that bad? She goes, yeah, uh, it's blistering. I said, what? Your vag is blistering because you put a hot burrito in your pants? And I just started laughing. And she goes, it's not funny. Well, I know it is kind of funny, but it's not funny. It's like it hurts. And I says, well, yeah, of course it hurts. And what did you think was going to happen if you put a piping hot burrito in your underwear? Like, seriously, come on. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Like, seriously, like. And then um, 
I says, well, let me call medical and see if they'll even see you. So I called medical and I told him, you know, that she was sneaking food out of the chow hall and then I had held her up and that she was squirming and around but told me she had to go to the bathroom when really she had a hot burrito in there and it burned her vag. So now she wants to see medical. She says it's blistering up and she's very upset and says she's in an awful lot of pain. So I don't know. Can you guys you can you guys see her and like treat her or whatever? And they all were laughing. They were laughing. They're like, oh my gosh. You know, these nurses have stories too, all right? Nurses have crazy stories too, trust me. <laughs> so they're like, all right, go ahead and um and bring her down after count clears. So I was like, all right. So I called the supervisor and notified them and told them what happened. And um, I don't know if I did an information report on this or not. It, it depends if the supervisor tells you to or not. So I took her, her I um, escorted her down to medical and I really wasn't in, I was there, but you know, I wasn't, I couldn't see anything. I wasn't trying to look in that way, you know what I mean? So the nurse is like, oh, yeah, you did you did burn it all right. It's burnt. I said, ugh. She goes, right? I'm like, yeah, oh. And then she goes, well, how bad is it, doc? It's, it, I feel like it's got blisters. Yeah, it's a blistered up. So the nurse gave her some, uh, gave her some cream. And she, <laughs> she gave her some cream and stuff and then just told her uh, not to be putting hot burritos or anything hot down 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 there <laughs> like why would you have to tell somebody that so anyway so gross but uh yeah so that's the hot burrito story <laughs> anyway so uh yeah then i escorted her back and she had her cream and whatever and then the girls were out at wreck and they were all eating their tasty burrito gross now let me explain to you okay like some of the men out there, you're probably thinking, oh, that's hot or, you know, whatever. Listen, these, a lot of these girls were like drug addicts and things like that, right? And when you get off your crack and stuff and you get into prison and you eat that crappy food full of starch and fat and whatever, and um, food sometimes is a comfort for them. And so they're gonna, you know, like some of us do turn to food for that. Um, so these girls like get in prison and they blow up like the Goodyear blimp. All right. These women are not, you know, attractive women. They, they're rough looking. These women look like they've really, uh, you know, been around, had a hard life, lived a rough life. You know, they got a lot of miles on them and they blow up when they're in prison because they eat all this food that is not good for you. And even if they buy stuff at the store, it's high in salt, high in sugar, high in starch, or high in fat. Like they don't, they really don't eat that healthy. And the food they give them in the chow hall is, um, you know, subpar, let's say, okay. I've never eaten any food ever at the prison ever. And um, know what I want to, cause it's gross. But anyway, so my point is, is these aren't like attractive. Most of these women aren't really attractive women. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, so just a little footnote for uh, those of you that are imagining that she's a cute, young, pretty girl. No, no, she's not. None of them are. Most, most none of them are. I mean, and if they do come in, uh, looking fit and whatever and then they blow up like the big year blimp within six months trust me you know they start gaining weight very quick and so that's just the way it is anyway so just wanted to uh tell you that uh that funny i thought it'd be a good a funny light-hearted story it is funny um it's not funny but it is funny okay i don't care it's funny it's it's hilarious, all right? There's a lot of funny things that do happen at the prison and we all have to laugh at ourselves and each other, um, you know, to make light of this situation. 
Anyway, there is there's the story about the hot burrito, baby. <laughs> so that's it. That's all for today. Tune in next time for the next story. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for letting us know that you appreciate the channel. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you.